Welcome back to another episode of the Pig and Whiskey Test Kitchen. Today we're going to be trimming a Boston butt. Over the weekend we competed in a triple at the New Jersey Knockout and we received a grand champion win with a first place in the pork category. So if you'll follow along with us we'll show you exactly how we trim the pork for that entry. First off, we start with the highest quality pork we can find. And in this case, it is a heritage breed pig. Much like most commercially available pork shoulders, it comes in a two pack. But it is not uncommon to see them in single packs, which sometimes it's easier to match up the sizes of the Boston butts. If you notice this one on the right, or rather my left, is much smaller in size than the other one. But we're going to go ahead and trim it because we're doing a triple this weekend and we're going to need a total of six butts trimmed. So that'll allow us to match up butts that are similar in size and pair them up for each cook for each day. I'm starting with the larger of the two butts. I placed it on a folded paper towel and what that does is allows it to stay stationary on the board, whereas sometimes the sliminess of the pork butt will cause it to slide all over the board. I'm starting with the bone end of the butt pointing towards myself. And if you notice at the bottom of the screen you'll see the money muscle, which is easily identifiable by the vertical striations in the meat. What I'm doing is I've found a vein of fat that runs across the top of the butt. I've inserted my knife and I'm slowly peeling it back from the horn and the shield area until I get to the bone. So essentially I keep peeling back until I've reached the bone area. Careful not to cut the butt in half. But if you take it slow, you can follow along that vein and not disturb any of the meat. Okay, the next step is we're going to take the flap and cut the top off to square it up to the butt. And basically this makes it a more compact and manageable mass. I wouldn't recommend throwing that piece away as it's great for making sausage. But honestly, if I were cooking this at home, I probably wouldn't remove it. What we're doing here is removing any excess fat between the two sections we just opened up. If you notice there's also some silver skin in here and we're going to get underneath that and carefully trim it away to expose the meat. The more we expose the meat, the more smoke, the more rub, the more flavor we can get into it. So just take your time carefully insert your knife below the membrane and work it back and forth until you remove it. This last piece here is the horn meat which is the most important for us in competition so we want to make sure we get a nice clean piece and good coverage of rub on the meat. Okay once we've cleaned that up we're going to clean up the inside of where the flap was. There's still a little bit there and it has its own fat and its own membrane. So while I don't think I show it here, it's still a good idea to remove it. Again we're carefully removing the fat and then inserting our knife below the membrane and peeling it back from the meat. There's no need to save this fat or the membrane as it's not really good to eat. Here we're just kind of squaring up any chunks that may be hanging off the side of the butt. Then right now we're going to turn the butt on its side and I'm going to show you a Pitmaster Pro Tip. If you notice right here is a lymph node. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and carve that out because we don't want it to affect the flavor of our meat. Essentially, we're trying to avoid cooking any off flavors into our pork. 
you notice it's kind of spongy and gelatinous. It's pretty easy to identify once you've done a few. The theory behind removing that gland is similar to the idea that when you kill a wild hog with your bare hands, you have to immediately jump on him and rip his nuts off with your teeth so that the glands in his testicles don't foul the meat with a wild gamey flavor. Okay, now we've turned the money muscle towards us, we're going to clean it up and separate out the money muscle. So what I'm doing here is just straightening up the top, removing any loose chunks. Then I'm going to switch knives to my Gunter Wilhelm flexible boning knife. I like this knife because it's flexible, it's easy to use, it's sharp as a razor, and it's nice and long so you can slice across the length of the butt. We're just peeling back layers from the top of the money muscle to try to level out the butt. Once we've exposed the top of the money muscle, we're going to figure out where to slice it. Now this next one I shigged off of Billy Gillespie, drinking whiskey on his back trailer while he was preparing his pork butts. We're going to slice straight down behind the money muscle, almost to the fat cap. Careful not to separate the money muscle from the butt, but we're going to get fairly close. Here I'm just squaring up the end of the money muscle, but I would like to revisit the slice that we just created. And we're going to undercut the money muscle just a little bit, about one to two inches, so that it folds even further out. And that'll give us more coverage area when we go to rub it. Here I'm just stroking this gorgeous money muscle more or less trying to figure out the taper and where to slice it, but we're going to slice off the tapered end. And you'll notice it's typically covered in a hard chunk of fat. But by slicing this off, what it does in theory is it keeps the money muscle from twisting while it's cooking. And it keeps the various muscles from separating. Sometimes this still happens as the fat veins in the money muscle can often render out and expand and this will affect the overall integrity of the money muscle when you begin to place it in the box for turn-ins. However, for your average backyard cook, that step is probably unnecessary and would be considered a waste of meat. Now that the money muscle is separated out, I'm just trimming off any fat that I see and squaring up the ends for cooking. Now KCBS rules state that the pork butt must be at least four pounds at the time of cooking. So a lot of teams will trim the pork butt all the way down to the minimum. And when you start with a 10 pound pork butt and trim it down to four pounds, you're essentially wasting about six pounds of meat. Some teams will even remove the bone, but essentially all this does is speed up cooking time and a lot of that meat tends to be wasted. But some teams focus more on trying to win than cooking a full pork butt, so it's understandable. However, our team is a poor team, so we have to cook the entire butt because that's what we're gonna eat for the next month. And that is our finished first place trim job. And now we're going to speed this up so you can see it done quickly. We are starting with the money muscle facing away from us. And now we are making our small cuts along the fat vein to separate out the flat. Here I turn the butt so you can see how we get down into it. But I'm cutting down into the lymph node and I'm trying to get under it. So you can see I easily remove that one in one piece. Okay, now that we've got the flap separated out, we're gonna go ahead and try to remove the fat and the membranes. So we're sliding the knife underneath making our cuts to remove it, trying not to remove any meat. 
slicing as carefully as possible so that you don't cut yourself. Okay, now that we have the inside cleaned, let's go ahead and cut off the flap and square it up. Go ahead and level the top of the butt. Basically just trying to find the back side of that money muscle. Squaring up the butt and the money muscle. We're going to slice down the back side. We're going to fold it out and undercut it about one to two inches. Careful not to remove the money muscle from the butt. Remove any excess meat or fat that you see visible. Find the tapered end and slice it off. Always keep in mind that you're cleaning as you go. If you see any excess fat, be sure to remove it. Some people like to do it at the end after they've finished trimming the butt, but I prefer to do it as I go. Okay, that's our finished butt. There are many different ways to trim a pork butt. This just happens to be our favorite. And as you can see, the results speak for themselves. We entered three contests this weekend, and we didn't receive anything less than sixth place. Thank you for joining us today in the Pig & Whiskey Test Kitchen. We hope to see you next time. Subscribe.